Welcome to All Things Aviation and Aerospace. I'm Vince Mickens. All Things Aviation and Aerospace is a weekly webcast about pursuing opportunities in the aviation and aerospace industries, and equally important, the endless possibilities available, which we were just talking about um, <laughs> in the industry, regardless of your skill set. Today, though, we have a very special guest who I am quite honored to have on All Things Aviation and Aerospace, not only because of her incredible story regarding the ill-fated Southwest Airlines flight in April of 2018, or her impressive naval aviator, go Navy, background <laughs> that included flight flying the FAA 18 Hornet uh, fighter jet, or her compelling book, Nerves of Steel. And she has a junior version of that too, which is pretty cool. It's, it's because she has utilized her accomplishments and her challenges to inspire the next generation of aspiring young aviation professionals, in particular, young female aviators. Captain Tammy Jo Schultz, welcome to All Things Aviation and Aerospace. Thank you, Vince, very much. It's really great to have you here. As many of my viewers know, one of the things that I like to do with this show is have young guests join the conversation so that they can speak directly to seasoned professionals in the industry. To that effect, I have three very impressive young ladies joining us today. All three are super excited about having this opportunity to chat directly with Tammy Jo. Mm -hmm. All three are climbing to new altitudes in aviation. You know, I had to just throw that, that, <laughs> that in there, right? I will start with the young lady who is a high school senior at the West Michigan Aviation Academy in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Devin Christner. Devin, welcome to the show. Thank you, I'm so happy to be here. We are very happy to have you. Next, we have Caitlin Fueling. Caitlin has been a guest on the show before. She graduated from Embry-Riddle Uni Aeronautical University at Prescott campus, at the Prescott, Arizona campus during the pandemic last year. She is currently a CFI, Certified Flight Instructor, and has been building time while contemplating the possibility of a career in the United States Air Force. We were talking about that in pre-show, so looking forward to having more conversation uh, about that. Um, and I'd like to say hi to Caitlin. Caitlin, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you. I'm so excited. Great to have you back. And our third aspiring young aviator guest, who actually has already begun her career as a first officer for Republic Airways. And matter of fact, she's sitting in a hotel in between flights, so we're lucky we could catch her. Um, not too long after she graduated from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach. Uh, and we are really happy to have you, Dakota Foster. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me back again. I'm super excited to be here today. Well, we're all excited because we have Tammy Jo Schultz on with us, and 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 Tammy has a, a wealth of of uh, history and information and experience uh, in aviation. So uh, it's it's really going to be great. Tammy, why don't we uh, start off and 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 chat a little bit about your your background? Uh, the the big part of how you actually got started in aviation because you come from a very interesting upbringing. Um, and it, the fact that it led to the career that you've had uh, is, is an interesting story within itself. Uh, well, thank you. I, don't all ranchers' daughters become pilots? <laughs> A few. <laughs> no, um, no one or two. You know, you're, the, you're, you're one of the two. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. No, I grew up in southern New Mexico on a hog and cattle ranch. We also farmed a bit of alfalfa and milo. And um, really, it was just while I was busy doing farm chores, the jets from Holloman Air Force Base anchored their dogfighting practice over our big hay barn. And so I would see this daily air show. And of course, it didn't take much to imagine how much more exciting that was than what I was doing. And, and then I started reading about aviation and met my first aviation hero on the pages of Jungle Pilot. His name was Nate Saints, and he had gotten started in aviation by serving in the military during World War II, gone on at, as a mechanic. He is where he started, and then he went on to earn his commercial license, and then uh, his book ended with him being a bush pilot down in Ecuador. So I felt like it was just such a wonderful tour of aviation. And 
so that's really kind of what turned on that uh, that love of aviation and realizing there are some practical steps to getting into it. Even though I did not know one pilot in my whole life up up through high school. <laughs> and you you grew up on a ranch, so h- how did your ranch hand pilot uh, parents? Um, handled the thought of you wanting to go into aviation. What were their thoughts about it? Well, um, it, first of all, I have to back up and say on a farm uh, and ranch, work needs a workforce. And so if, if you could do it, you were welcome to it. You know, it wasn't, there were no guys and girl lines in, in our family. And I always thought we had a very old fashioned family, but uh, of course, getting into the modern world, I realized there were some lines. Um, and I'm sorry, Vince, I may have gotten off topic. Ask me again what you said. Oh, I was just asking what your parents were thinking when you uh, told them that you were <laughs> interested in aviation. Uh, my dad, I think, just shook his head and, and told me to go on to the next assignment of what he wanted me to do. My mom, uh, her reaction, and you would have to know her, I think, to to appreciate this because she's so very practical. And she just looked up and then said, uh, those people are smart. Okay. <laughs> and that was her answer. <laughs> and uh, so, but in truth, her comment was really, she didn't know anything about it. And she, it was not a world that she had lived in or knew anything about. My dad hadn't flown. Uh, I think he flew maybe one or two times whenever he joined the military and then had an appendicitis and that disqualified him. So, so um, really they, they kind of ignored it for a while because they thought, oh, she'll have another thought next month. It was hard for them to relate to is what you're saying, really. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and so your mom's saying that those people are smart. Really, she's saying that's a really sophisticated career. I, I think that was it. I try to take that as hard <laughs> to heart. I don't think she was saying, you know, Tammy Joe, that's that's above you. <laughs> well, we know that because we know how smart <laughs> Tammy Joe is with all of the accomplishments that you do. It sounds like though no. that your your upbringing set a nice foundation for what you were about to have to deal with as you move further towards a career in aviation? You know, one of the things that I will always be grateful for is having chores from as early as I could remember, because chores are part of that problem solving uh, that, that we need for any occupation, any vocation or career. And if you don't have problems, you'll never learn to solve them. So having hard work, learning the joy of hard work early is, is something that I can lay at the feet of my parents. Yeah. So we, we all kind of, a lot of us have heard a lot of the, your background and your story. One of the things that we've heard about, uh, and I've specifically have heard and read about and heard you talk about is the challenge you had when you decided you wanted to be uh, a military aviator. <laughs> yes. Um, career day was the beginning. It was kind of previews of coming attractions, I'm afraid. I arrived and was so excited because I, years before, I had started reading and collecting things about aviation and wanted to do that. And I went to the career day and the colonel in charge, his first question was, are you lost? And when I said, no, sir, I, I signed up for aviation. He shook his head and he goes, this is career day, not hobby day. You need to go find something girls can do. And I just took the closest seat that was empty, not out of defiance or courage. It wasn't our school. We'd bust into the big sophisticated town of Almogordo, New Mexico, and our, our buses were locked. I had nowhere to go. But as I listened, I was just kind of in wonder. It was enchanting. It was even better than the books had made it out to be. And, uh, but I left there, talked to my guidance counselor to see if maybe he was mistaken. She agreed with him and I went to school and studied something different. Uh, so that was kind of my start. And it, it did take, I met another pilot 
and she was getting her wings in the Air Force. So I felt like, all right, somebody got under this fence. I might as well try. And the Air Force recruiters uh, said, no, I waited for somebody else to get behind the desk and went in and asked again. And they said, no, we don't need girls. And there was a- Just plain uh, no, no explanation, just no. Well, no, we don't need girls. They were advertising in the paper that if you had your four-year degree and you wanted to fly, the Air Force wanted you. So I cut it out of the paper and took it with me. And they said, we don't need girls. If you have a brother that wants to fly, bring him in, but don't come back. So that was my third, uh, my third trip to the Air Force recruiter. I went to the Army recruiter and he said, uh, you're not a fit for us. And a girlfriend of mine from college who had gone into the Air Force as a nurse, she said, Tammy Joe, try the Navy. And I was kind of laughing because I'm from New Mexico. You can't get more landlocked and less water than New Mexico. <laughs> and ships were not my love. And she goes, no, no, they have carriers. They have aircraft. So I went to the Navy recruiter. They at least let me take the test. And it would take me uh, three different Navy recruiters before I found one that would process it. And, and then, uh, then I got into the flow of military aviation and boot camp began. And, and the way you go. And, and fast forward, um, you had a chance to, to do some carrier landings. Did I have that right? Yes. <laughs> yes. In the Navy, if you go, there's primary and then out of primary, you, you get a choice, but also it's needs of the Navy. And uh, you can either go helicopters, pro propellers, or jets. And I had the... Um, the honor to go jets. I love, that was my first choice. And in T2, we did a lot of, you know, instrument familiarization, formation, things like that. But one of the things that we did in T2s was go to the carrier. And everybody knew if you were a Navy jet pilot that you were going to go to the carrier a couple of times in two different aircraft before you got your wings. But what they didn't tell you was you're going to go solo the very first time you go. And so that was kind of eye-opening to us students when we learned that. The joke was that um, there's not enough money to pay anyone to be in your back seat, your first trap and catch shot. But <laughs> truthfully, the Navy was wise in what they had learned. Um, and that is, when you go, you need to not be thinking about what your instructor is thinking about what you should be doing you need to be thinking about what you should be doing and keep that decision loop very tight because your attention to detail is your safety net. And um, we'd practiced hundreds of carrier landings at the, at the um, runway before we went. So we had all the mental and muscle memory that it took. And then group psychology takes over and you think, okay, they've done it hundreds of times before and I've been in training with these knuckleheads and they've been in training with me. So if, if they can do it, I could do it. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, <laughs> the thing I got a kick out of before we got started uh, with the show is that you immediately, when you came on and the fact that we have three young ladies from three in, at three different levels, one finishing up her last year of high school, one recently graduated from an aeronautical university and one that's been out for a few years already flying and you went right into a kind of a leadership professor mode. It's like, oh, well, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about each of your careers. So, so let's kind of let's transition into that and talk about um, and and talk with the three young ladies about what they are doing. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I was gonna I'm gonna reverse myself on it. I'm gonna start out with Caitlin. Uh, I'm sorry, with uh, Dakota. Dakota is currently flying for Republic Airways. Uh, sitting right seat as a first officer, has been doing that for a few years now uh, after graduating from Embry-Riddle at Daytona Beach in 2017. Do I have that right, Dakota? Yeah, 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, uh, let's have a conversation with Tammy about that and, and about um, tell us a little bit again about your background uh, and, and what you're currently doing. Sure. Um, so I graduated from the Daytona Beach campus of Riddle in spring of 2017. And after um, I did that, I went down the road about 15 minutes south to a flight school 
And I was a flight instructor there. So I had my CFI, my I, my MEI. Um, probably about after a year of doing that is when I upgraded to the progress check pilot. So we were actually doing like the mock check rides with students before they would go up with our um, check airmen and DPEs and stuff like that. So I did that. Um, flew a whole lot of 172s, a couple Seminoles. Um, nothing cool like the F-18 that you got to fly, which I would kill to do. But um, <laughs> so I got my thousand hours and I went to Republic. I am Columbus, Ohio based. So it's kind of nice because I live at home, drive down to work, fly for three or four days. And then I have somewhere from four to like I just came back from like a nine, uh, nine days off. So it's kind of nice to have a little a good little break in between um, my trips and stuff. But um, school is back in session for the college kids. And so that means career fairs, expos, all of that sort of thing is picking up. And I'm on the, uh, in, um, in Republic, we have the pilot, pilot talent acquisition team. So we actually go out to events. We meet potential students, potential candidates um, for interviews. We also have a cadet program, um, which I happened to be a part of when I was in school myself. So I was a, I joined the cadet program and it's not necessarily a guarantee like, oh, I have to go specifically to Republic, but it does give me the option of I've done my interview. The job is there when I want it. If I, you know, if I so choose to take it. Um, so I'm doing that now. So I do a lot of um, the events are starting to pick up. So each month we get a whole list of, hey, here's these events. What's going to work with your flight schedule? So it's kind of a balance uh, between the two of, flying slash recruiting and then on the side um, I'm also involved with girls in aviation day for my local women in aviation chapter um, I'm actually the host or planner of this year's event for the Cleveland chapter so that's on September 25th which uh, if you guys are all involved in women in aviation I assume you know it's national girls in aviation day so looking forward to that and uh yeah, hopefully it turns out to be a good event and expose the younger generation of girls to aviation and aerospace, not just pilots, not just mechanics, but everything in, in general. Yeah, I, I, the, I guess my, I was going to toss to Tammy, but I think one question I do have for you, with what you've accomplished so far, and by the way, this is, it's really great that you're taking the time and effort to pass it along to the next generation uh, and be involved in that, especially representing uh, at your stage in your career uh, of aviation. Um, you are, I believe you mentioned that you're due to, to get promoted. So um, with that and, and with what you've been doing, what are you looking forward to uh, long-term with your career? Um, long-term with my career, I am hoping to go to the majors. Um, I interned in my junior year of college with United Airlines. So that is my dream airline. I love to fly the 757. Um, after all the airlines retired the 74, it was a little disappointing. Um, the queen of the skies, I feel like was kind of everyone's like, wow, like that's, that's the goal. But she's since retired. So the 75 is my dream. But um, I'm also not going to put all my eggs in one basket either because this last year has proven how our industry can be. And everyone always says there's one thing in aviation that is constant and it's change. And so <laughs> I feel like within our career, we have to learn, we really have to learn to go with the flow. And I feel like that's what makes, um, that's what makes a good aviator, someone who's willing to go with the flow and adapt. And um, yeah, about the upgrade, it's, it's on the horizon at some point. Um, I'm eligible no pun intended. and kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no pun intended. It's on the horizon. Uh, kind of just holding off just a little bit longer. Um, I really enjoy my quality of life. I have 16 to 18 days off a month. So, you know, when I do upgrade, that means that I'm going to take a little bit of a hit when it comes to quality of life. Comes with a pay, you know, a little bit of a pay upgrade, which is cool. But um, I don't chase this job for the money. I chase it for my passion and for my love for this job. Um, so with my 18 days off, I'm able to be involved with my local women in aviation 
we have astronomy night, we have girls in aviation day, like we have so many events, which allows me to just kind of spread myself out to the community and share my passion with the, with the younger community of girls. Tammy, you want to chime in there? Well, first of all, Dakota, what a treat that I get to be talking to you. You are so accomplished at, at, at such a young age. Um, and you. and I, love, I love that you have realized already, and certainly this is a, a lesson that I, I learned and uh, Caitlin and Devin, I'm sure, are taking notes of, and that is there are times you're going to have to focus just on flight training. But when you, when you have that focus completed, you, you know, it is so good to spread out a little bit and be involved in other things than just going to work. I think that work-life balance is something that can get lost um, when we have hurdles in front of us that need it. And um, I know one of the things that even in the Navy, during flight training, even during boot camp, um, once a week, I had church and I had the people in my church, you know, so whatever it is, and then expanding your, your, your peer group. And, and I love the fact that you're looking at your future, not just by what can you earn, but quality of life. And so I would, I would say there's statistics out there and I'll let you all look them up or contact me later about um, different airlines and some of them have a really high amount of, of women pilots compared to others. But one of the things that I think you'll really wanna look at is quality of life and then upgrade. How many, how many women in that community go to the left seat? Because I found in, in my research that there's quite an, an amazing change in who keeps their lady uh, ladies flying you know who who keeps them through upgrade and that's a sign of quality of life um, because what looks really good right now flying wide bodies all over the world uh, it may not be that attractive when you decide to get married and have kids and so just keeping, keeping the idea of go 10, 10 years forward, look back, what decision today would be a good one for tomorrow. And um, it, it's completely up to, that's what I love about aviation. It really uh, can, it's, it's a signature that you get to write your own uh, in aviation because if wide bodies are just something that you have dreamed of flying, or, you know, for me, the smaller, the better, I loved it. Uh, then that's, you have a chance to seek that and, and try it out. So it sounds like you have got all, all your ducks in a row, so to speak, and uh, you're <laughs> headed to right where you want to go. Yeah. Devin, you're on the other end of that spectrum with uh, being a senior at a high school, an aviation high school. My, we'd like to hear a little bit more about your background, starting out with how did you end up, uh, you know, picking or having the opportunity to go to West Michigan Aviation Academy? Yeah, for sure. So the, I go to a public charter high school, so it's completely a lottery on whether or not you get in. And I was originally drawn by the STEM program, which is like engineering. We have a strong aerospace engineering program. And so I was originally drawn by that engineering program and didn't think that much about the opportunity to fly airplanes during high school until I took a flight in one of our school airplanes. And um, the CFI that was flying let me control a little bit after takeoff, which it was trimmed, he'd done the takeoff, like we were in cruise, but I was still like, this is the coolest thing ever. I need to do this. So I decided to kind of switch from the engineering to the aviation side. And from there, I kind of just jumped on every opportunity that we have at the school. So we have a lot of like, we have a club called Women in Aviation Club. So once a month, we bring in a speaker to the school to talk about their career and so I've just gone to all of those and just talked with all the women pilots and business engineers. They're, they 
come from all facets of aviation, but it's still so cool to talk with them about their path and what they've done. So I really enjoyed that aspect of school. And then this year I'll be in what's called flight class. And so I took ground school last year, passed the written, which qualified me to get in the class. And then this year I have like a flying class where we work out, like work through planning flights and everything throughout the school day. And then I fly about once a week just because everyone else in the class has to fly too. So two things you just brought up. One is that aviation really wasn't on your radar mm -hmm. until you took that first flight. Mm -hmm. uh, you were thinking possibly maybe the engineering route or whatever. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing that comes to mind to me is, is that you um, went from it not being on your radar at all to now you're totally absorbed in it. Yes. Um, and, 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 and so you, what, what do you see as far as what you'd like to do? You, you had mentioned earlier that uh, you're already, you have a school in mind, which you can share with us about that and what you think you'd like to study coming out of uh, West Michigan Aviation Academy. Yeah, so I think I wanna go to Purdue for engineering as well as aviation. So I wanna be able to graduate college with my CFI in a degree in engineering, hopefully either aerospace or civil, I haven't decided yet. Um, but so I haven't lost the engineering part, I've just kind of added aviation in. And after that, I we've had a lot of um, meetings with Gulfstream because they're a big sponsor for our school as well as Delta. So I really like Gulfstream because I like the um, like corporate jet kind of idea, um, but obviously kind of like what Dakota said, I wanna keep my options open. Um, I also really like flight instructing. We have an RC club at school, which is like, it's the plane right there. We fly them yeah. inside in the gyms. Yeah, so, as a matter of fact, aren't you now president of that RC club? Yes, I am. <laughs> That's really cool. How did you get into RC flying, by the way? And for, for those who may not be familiar, radio controlled. Mm -hmm. um, so at school, we can't start flying until senior year. But after that first flight, that was my freshman year. I was like, I need to get into aviation right now. What is open that I can do as a ninth grader in high school? And the answer was RC club. So I started flying in February of my freshman year and I soloed in May. And then I went to like a specialty camp for a week that summer. And like, then I got back from camp and learned how to be a CFI, which was a completely different experience than like, being taught to fly and then teaching someone how to fly. So it all went pretty fast, but that sophomore year I started flight instructing. And then from there, it just, I guess my students were very kind and always very exemplary and like said that I was a really good flight instructor. So then I just got more and more involved in the club and was elected last year as president. Has your involvement in RC flying or radio control flying uh, helped you with your studies and, and towards your goals? of becoming a pilot? I think it has just because we teach stalls, we teach slow flight, we teach all like the beginning stages of full scale flight. So learning just the aerodynamics and the basics of all that earlier on, I think has created a really good base for going into flight class and doing all the same maneuvers in the full scale plane this coming year. Yeah, Tammy, your thoughts? Oh, I just want to uh, applaud um, first Dakota and now Devin and Caitlin's coming up. Um, I, I wish so bad I could just put all three of you on a billboard to, uh, to point to and say, ladies, uh, no matter your age, look at what is, is out there for us to do. I mean, every horizon has not been conquered. I, I think that's one of the lovely things about aviation and you all tell me if I'm wrong, but you never fly the same sky. It's always a new day. Even if it's in the same day, it's always a new sky. And, um, you know, one of the exciting things that I, I see, and now there's data surveys and, and, and um, studies that have proven this. And I want you all to put this in your back pocket, should you ever need it. Uh, just for yourself even. And that is, they've found that 
if you take a group of men and uh, let them work on a project together, their IQ average bumps up 10%. The biggest jump you'll get in IQ is when you add a group of qualified women to that group, it bumps about 30%. And before we think we hold all the pixie dust, it's the same if you have a group of women and you add a group of qualified men. So as women, we bring something to aviation that's different. We have a different perspective. If you have brothers, you know this. Uh, you know, we have a different perspective, a different energy. And so companies have found that there is an increased productivity and intellectual bump. So you're doing this because you're interested in it. And because, quite frankly, all three of you have proven you're good at it. But you're also pouring into an industry that is a little lopsided right now. Not, not through any fault, I think, of any one person or one group, uh, there is just more men in aviation right now. And so when you jump in there and, and partake and get involved, you're improving our industry. And um, I think about, uh, Devin, how you started RC flying and you enjoyed it. And so that translated whenever you started teaching it that joy of what you loved, you translated to your students and that's why you're president of the club. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah exactly. So fun. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's really awesome. Um, Caitlin, we haven't forgotten about you. Uh, we just are covering a lot of territory here with, with, with the, the advice that uh, Tammy is offering and, and getting insight on all three of you. But Caitlin, your, your story is really interesting in terms of your background, your, your father, uh, was Air Force, uh, uh, and he was a, a, a load of loading specialist, right? Yeah, he was a loadmaster on the one. Loadmaster, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, tell us a little bit more about that and about your background and your your getting into aviation and uh, and and where you are at this point. Okay, so I'm Caitlin, and like I said, my dad was a loadmaster on the 141s, and he was out of the Air Force before I was even five years old. So honestly, aviation, he talked about it all the time. I was like, oh, whatever. Yeah, you flew in airplanes. Okay, that's cool, dad. And then right before I was graduating high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Never been in a plane before. He's like, oh, let's, let's just go up and fly. And I was like, okay, sounds good. So I went on one flight and then I applied for school that next month and I got into Embry-Riddle. And I actually admired Devin because you have such a good opportunity to be doing this in high school. Because I went into flight training at Embry-Riddle first day. I had no idea. I'd been in a plane, a small plane one time. I, I had no idea what I was doing. At first, I was like overwhelmed. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if this is for me. There's so many people come in with this lifelong dream of flying airplanes. They're like, oh, I grew up like wanting to be a pilot forever. And I felt like an outcast there. I was like, I didn't. But like, this is what I want to pursue and do. And I'm just really happy that I stuck with it because it really taught me so much discipline. And I'm so happy that I got through those four years and graduated with honors and got my aeronautical science degree. And now I'm just making career decisions, which I'm really happy that Tammy's on here because I've had a lot of people be like, oh, go tanker transport, tanker transport. And I always tell them, I'm like, that sounds fun. But if I had the opportunity to fly a fighter jet, I could not say no, you know? <laughs> so I feel like that's such a good perspective for me to have because I have a lot of people I know. And my dad knows a lot of people because he was on the 141 flying larger aircraft, especially military aircraft. And he's like, oh, you'll love it. You'll love it. And I'm sure I would. But it's so nice to have a different perspective of someone who's actually flown jets. I think that's like really exciting for me to be on here for that. Well, I, you know, we only know what we have done. And so I, I can echo your sentiments. It is fun. I mean, it's, it's really kind of the race horse, or race, horse race car uh, in the sky. At the time that I flew F-18s, it was the Navy's premier strike fighter and girls hadn't been flying it. I mean, uh, I was in the first, uh, class uh, that had one other girl, <laughs> Pam, Pam and I. And uh, before that, I flew A7s. And then even in training, um, 
I flew the T2, the A4, and went to the boat, dropped bombs, strafed, and um, those are all things that they are fun experiences. I I have to admit, um, it it also is just a a slice of aviation. So I've known ladies that flew. Um, whoops. Oh, I'm sorry. I had uh, a low <laughs> a low battery signal, and I apologize for that. But there's certainly. Um, if you have the chance, and one of the things, uh, my son, who is kind of in in uh, in that area of trying to decide what he wants to fly, he's in the Air Force Academy, and he hopes that he gets chosen. So I'm going to plug us in here, so I don't completely go offline. Um, he hopes he gets to fly, and his attitude is, you know, I have a preference, but quite frankly. If I get something with a pointy nose, great. It'll be fun, light my hair on fire. If I get something that's a wide body, then I'll have a crew and a crew is fun. Yeah, I can that's say, my thoughts too. yeah, and you'll fly all over the world. Exactly. You will have, uh, and having flown in the Navy, um, attack and strike fighter, and then flown in Southwest Airlines, I will have to tell you, it is even Steven on what was more fun. I mean, obviously there was tactical stuff in, in the F-18 and the A-7 that was so much fun. But the crew every day was, it was a fun dynamic, you know, playing pranks on each other, just having a good laugh about different things that happen in the day. Um, it, it's just, it's a fun dynamic. So. Uh, Dakota is in that dynamic right now where you get to, you know, enjoy the crew concept. And when you move to the left seat, I will tell you, it bumps up the fun because you set the tone and you know what the tone is before you ever get there. And um, I think there's, there's a lot you can learn from your good captains. There's a lot you're going to learn from your bad captains. And um, I would, I would take notes. You know, one of the things that I, I, I would say that helped in the, in the crew area was if there's something just small, whether it's taking chocolates or, um, a, you know, a tray of coffee, if it's something that you can let your crew know before you ever get there, that you care about them, that you thought about them before you arrived, um, people trust people who care about them. And when you have that, then you have a cohesiveness that you can go forward and face, face problems together with. Um, Caitlin, I would highly recommend the military. It's, uh, you'll look at the, um, the requirement of years that you owe them once you go through flight training. And I would tell you, those are years that are not a, uh, a punishment by any means. Look at those years as I've got a guaranteed job for X amount of years with 30 days of leave, paid leave my first year and full medical, dental, you name it. There's not many jobs out there that provide that. So yeah, definitely um, looking towards military. It's something I've been thinking about for a long time. It's more of making connections and deciding exactly what path to take. Well, the nice thing is you've got choices because you're, you're, your education and your qualifications already set you up. Um, I think Dakota wins in the III category of having so many instrument yeah, qualifications or instructor qualifications. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you, you can see just some very practical steps right in front of you in Caitlin, Dakota. Um, that's, that's one of the things that I think I'm going to give you as as personal jobs along the way is to not be shy about telling people how you got into it. I, I use the example sometimes, you know, I'll ask a group, how do you become a racehorse jockey? And everybody kind of looks sideways, like who's going to raise their hand? There's no, there's no, you know, I'm going to apply here and become a racehorse jockey. No, it is kind of one of those 
intangible uh, paths that you would need to know somebody in the industry to understand how to get there. And I think sometimes becoming a pilot or an air traffic controller or different things like that, it requires kind of a guide. So, you know, thanks for all of you, the way that you volunteer already. That's, that's important in our industry and especially for young ladies. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the things I wanted to point out uh, that's something I've heard you talk about before, Tammy Joe, and that is um, as much as you're talking about the opportunities, particularly for women uh, and the challenges that women may face, you have said that you've had some great male role models uh, in, the, in your training uh, and in your different commands that you've, you've served in. Uh, can you expand on that a little bit? Sure. Um, I, first of all, just having a, a dad that treated me equal, you know, kind of set the stage. So that was what I considered a norm. And brothers that were the same, uh, had the same attitude. So having that certainly helps. And then whenever I got into the military, my first instructor was a, a, a Marine instructor. And I'm sure he lost the uh, Rochambeau of who's got to take the girl, you know, because there was only one a year basically that went through flight training there in Corpus Christi. And he was such a gentleman and consummate aviator. And uh, so my introduction into aviation really was from uh, Captain Rick Coston, United States Marine Corps. And so when I went on and had some pretty harsh rebuffing, why I always had that background to realize, okay, that isn't the norm. And, you know, these, they're, <clears throat> sometimes their aviation skills might be great, but their, their manners had slipped. And um, I could just remember, no, that's not what, that's not the real attitude here. That's not the professional attitude and move on. And then um, in T2s and I had an incredible skipper, Fred Grant, we still keep in touch. And then uh, in, in, uh, in A7s, whenever I checked into my first fleet squadron, I had a, a great skipper. But going back to the, the ones that were not so great, it really underlined that life lesson, which I, I think probably you ladies have already seen and learned, but just to put it in words so that we remember it. And that is never let an offense get in the way of a great opportunity. I think uh, it's so easy to feel like we're the only ones that are facing this or that we're the only ones that are getting uh, kind of professionally slapped around a bit and it's not. Um, and when we can remember that the, the path that we carve through that, uh, it's open for people behind us. So we do wanna be careful how we open up the jungle because it takes a machete sometimes to cut the weeds back, but we certainly want to leave it in a way that the people coming behind us have a great path. And um, I think that uh, just, just realizing that what we do when we think nobody's watching, um, we do have an audience. And I think about Southwest Airlines. I faced some real rebuttal at Southwest Airlines, not, not because of Southwest. There was just a bit of a, a culture war in the cockpit uh, going on in America. There had been a number of things crew resource management was just coming on board. So the, the captain was no longer king without a Magna Carta. Um, you know, they wanted everybody to have a voice that was in the cockpit. That's why they require you to be qualified to be in the right seat of the cockpit. And there was um, women were now being uh, able to fly tactical or combat aircraft in combat missions and that anytime there's change in the horizon or that has happened, it unsettles everyone. So people feel a little more at ease in expressing their opinions or acting on them. And so it's a pretty ugly time for women in aviation, not just in the military, but in commercial aviation. And there was a gentleman, there was a number of them, but 
one that stands out is Jim Rice, Captain Jim Rice. He was the senior Czech airman, I think, in the company. Um, he certainly became that. And he was just such a gentleman. Uh, he had a daughter that was an architect. So she had kind of fought some battles there and he knew what that was like. And, and he just made flying what it should be. Uh, it's fun. It's meant to be fun. And if it's not fun, there's something wrong, either with the aircraft or with you. So, you know, the people along the way, especially we ladies, I think sometimes can forget that it was men that unlocked the doors for us to get into aviation. We still have to push hard sometimes and get them open, but uh, we certainly, it's, it's not an us, them. It should not be. Well said. Let me give the ladies an opportunity to ask any questions they may have. We have about uh, 15 minutes or so left. And I, ladies, I'd like you to be, I'm sure you have things on your mind. This is a rare opportunity for you to talk directly with Tammy Joe. So have at it. Anybody? So, uh, Tammy, I guess what is, um, I mean, obviously, I've read your book and I even ended up, there's a group of us girls at Republic where I read your book and I signed my name and my position in the company, sent it off to one of my girlfriends in the company. And then we kind of like, almost like a sisterhood of the traveling pants, except that it's your book. So we passed your book like from FO to captain and back and forth throughout the company. Um, and there's a lot of really good takeaways from your book, Nerves of Steel and everything. And, you could tell us um, so much good advice, but what is the best advice that you've personally been given? I'm trying to think the advice that I've been <laughs> given. Um, you know, I, I would say one of them that I think about is uh, what I've read. Uh, advice that I've read, and that is to those who much is given, much will be required. And I think everybody on this screen has been given much. You've had to work for it. You've had to work hard. You've had to root out some details to find that rock uh, that's steady in the river to get across. Uh, but with that ability to do it comes a responsibility to pass that on. And uh, I think everybody here has instructed. So, you know, you really didn't know your subject until you taught it. I think about whenever I did carrier landings in T2s, um, certainly made it, made it on board without boltering and made it off. Then in A4s, same thing. And then I came, I cir circled back and I taught carrier landings for about a year and uh, I don't think I knew how to carry your land really until I taught it. And I didn't continue in carrier landings because at that time women were not ship based. I went on through tactical aircraft, but that time swath in carrier landings always makes me shake my head and think, you know, I only thought I knew how to land on the carrier until I started teaching it. Um, and that uh, coupled with don't let offenses get in the way of opportunity. We live in a time that would let us think that we're all victims, that it's so easy to take offense on whether it's a pronoun or a, uh, a statement of faith or what political party you're a part of or endorse. You know, those are things that should be able to be discussed with some relish uh, when you meet somebody with a different opinion. I've, I've always found it interesting when I sit down it, I commuted my entire career at Southwest. We live outside of San Antonio and I would fly out of Houston or Dallas or, or Phoenix or even Baltimore, depending on where I could get the best schedule uh, to fit my family's schedule. And so I would sit down beside people or they would sit beside me and they would be so interesting. And we rarely had the same opinions, but just, when you can discuss things civilly, it's, it's so interesting. And I always felt enriched when I walked away from talking with somebody who didn't have the same opinion 
that I have. So uh, I guess those two, maybe I expanded to three things would be <laughs> what I would put in, in a nutshell to hand off. Caitlin, uh, or, I'm sorry, Devin, actually. Devin, you're about to go and you're starting your senior year in high school, finishing up. Uh, anything you'd like to ask uh, Tammy Joe about as you uh, get ready to finish up your high school and, and head off to college? Yeah, so I kind of have two questions. One of them is more like a story. Um, the first one is like, can you tell us about, or do you have a specific memory of your favorite flight you ever did? Or my second question is like, what advice, kind of like what um, Kate Dakota said, like what is the advice you have for someone starting out in the aviation industry and like wanting to get a fulfilling and long career out of the aviation industry? Right. I'll start uh, with your last question first. Mm -hmm. And that is do exactly what you're doing continue keeping close to what you're interested in. Um, ask questions and, uh, you know, try to, try to have a, a diverse group of aviation input, uh, you know, so uh, talking to people like Dakota and Caitlin and, and other pilots that are in it just ahead of you and see, you know, what is the temper of, the atmosphere right now at Republic Airways, um, you know, instructing. And, and that way you, you get to kind of have these uh, reconnaissance uh, ladies and gentlemen ahead of you to know. And then it, like myself, you know, it, it was 36 years ago that I got into aviation. So I can have a long range perspective for you. And that is, I have never, been sorry that I made this choice thinking, oh, I wish I'd have gone ahead and done whatever. I also absolutely look forward to every day. Uh, I retired from Southwest early about a year ago mm -hmm. uh, this month, and just because there were new projects on my horizon that I couldn't do both. And it's, it's something that you know, I've done military and then I flew over forest fires for a summer. Absolutely fun. And then uh, Southwest. And now I fly our own aircraft. Um, it's a Piper Malibu now and do angel flights as well as just having the opportunity to go to things like a, a friend of mine, Jeannie Lovett, General Lovett just had a change of command in Albuquerque. And I was visiting my folks in Aztec, New Mexico. So I was able to just hop down and to Albuquerque, go to that change of command before I came home to Texas. So I would say every stage has its perks and its downs, but um, it, is a, it is a community that, uh, you know, from meeting uh, young people in the area and they go, oh, I, you know what, I'm flying for Republic or I went, to Embry Riddle in Prescott, or I'm going to, you know, the same school you're in there in, um, let me see, Kate, uh, Devin, you're at a public charter school mm -hmm. there in Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids, thank yeah. you. The school's actually and, for a property. Oh, excellent. So, you know, whenever you meet somebody in that group, you already have this kind of common camaraderie already going, well, put that whole umbrella over aviation and you can walk up on any airport in the world and start a conversation with somebody with, what do you fly? What do you do here? And they like what they do. So they're happy to talk about it. And then they want to know about you and you've got your own story. So um, it's, uh, it's a great community. Uh, what was your first question? I apologize, I've forgotten. I just asked, like, do you have a specific favorite flight or like a time that you recall that you had a really awesome experience flying? Or you know, question. go ahead. Yeah, uh, I will say I remember my first, oh, there's so many, but my first solo in the Hornet and um mm. Just, it was an aircraft that wasn't even on the horizon for women to fly when I got in. 
and I didn't set my heart on it because I'm, I'm a little bit of my mom's child as well as my dad's. And I'm very practical. You know, if that's not within my, my horizon to do it, I'm not going to beat my head against the wall and waste time. I want to do what I've got in front of me with excellence. And if, if something else comes, comes within grasp, I'll certainly, you know, throw a grappling hook out to get it, but I, I'm not going to beat my head against the wall for things that aren't mine to have. So when that opened up, um, that was just pretty awesome. And, and, uh, there was a lot of, uh, I would say there was a lot of turbulence in the Navy at the time that I got started in F-18s, the squadron skipper, um, XO, OPSO, none of them were happy to see Pam and I there and nor were we made very welcome. <laughs> and so getting to just go in the Hornet by myself and go, oh, this is the racehorse I signed up for. And, and just kind of coming up over the Sierra Nevadas and, and going inverted and pulling down the opposite side and then you know scooting along Death Valley at a low level, we won't divulge what level, um, you know, those are things that were just like, golly, Lord, I can't believe this just keeps getting better and better. So uh, that would be a pretty memorable flight. And it ended with, oh my goodness, I don't know about this because whenever I came in to do my landings, I was going to do a couple just for practice anyway, but the, the Hornets, uh, you know, the leading edge devices and the flaps and everybody kind of moves around to maintain one G at all times. So uh, it, it's kind of a moving wing. And when you land, you don't just land and then everybody settles down. You land and your wings are still kind of moving around. And the first few times I'm thinking, I don't remember this on my other flights. And I went around, did another touch and go. And uh, I called for a full stop and I went and it, it just danced around so much. I thought, Oh my goodness. I went around again. And then I went, Oh yeah, I remember. I do remember those wings, you know, they kind of walk around and settle down at just about, you know, 60 or 40 knots. So um, it was funny because you go from, I am on top of the world to, Oh my gosh, can I land this thing? (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Uh, that's that's really great. I, I wanted to give Caitlin one uh, final opportunity. Caitlin, do you have a, a question at all? I, I know we talked a little bit. Uh, Tammy talked a lot about uh, some advice regarding your consideration of going into uh, military flying. So I just wanted to see if you had anything else you wanted to ask her before we start to wrap up. Um, I kind of had more of not necessarily a question, but what we were talking about before we actually started streaming was... <laughs> some barriers that you were asking about for women. And I like, couldn't think of anything right away. And then when you brought up teaching to learn, like that really hit home for me because I feel like that was a really big thing at my school. Like everyone taught each other. You were all in the library. And if somebody didn't know something, they were helping you. And you told somebody else you like something you learned. And I felt like when I was at school, especially in Prescott, there was not a lot of girls in your class. Like you were lucky if you were one of two, maybe three girls in your class. That was super awesome. Right. And I feel like while you wanted to support the other girls, I feel like a lot of times um, people could be timid to work with like men. Cause you are like, mm-hmm. they, maybe they know more than me. They've always dreamed about aviation. Like I want to go partner with the girls. And it was nice. Cause I had a lot of male friends and, they were super welcoming and it was once you got into like learning with them you realized oh I can teach you something and you can teach me something and I think it's important to support other women especially with like women in aviation I was in that too but it's also important to understand that other people are resources and like we can support other people too and learn from them and that really helped me especially when I started flying I I felt like your story is kind of a perseverance story. I did not have a great instructor. I was, I felt like I had no idea what I was doing and I wasn't learning anything. And it was like, I felt like it was like, no, 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 you're not doing this right. And you got told no Mm -hmm. so many times. And I'm just so happy that I stuck (laughs) with it. And like, I feel like I can really relate to not necessarily the same, but you were shot down a few times before you actually (laughs) got into the rhythm of what you wanted to do. Well, and uh, I love that your perspective is reach out and 
and help other people. And don't feel like it's an us, them with girls and guys uh, in aviation. And I, I know what you're talking about. I remember feeling, and I still do. I, it's, it's hilarious to me that um, whenever I fly, my husband, I'll fly someplace and I'll be the one in the left seat. I mean, we switch back and forth. He's a pilot also and has done everything I have, A7s, F-18s, Southwest. And whenever we fly in, they automatically ask him, how much fuel do you want? Do you want it hanger? You know, stuff like that. And, and they'll get to talking sometimes and I'm invisible. And so I don't know that they mean harm. Uh, we sometimes as ladies have to inject ourselves into that conversation, but um, it's, I think it's a natural tendency. Guys may assume that we're not really interested in fuel flows or, you know, things that are aviation pertaining, even though you're right there signed up for lessons. So it is, it, it just becomes incumbent on us to step up to the plate and become a part of the conversation. And yes, if you can grab another girl and help her up the ladder or bring her into that conversation, you might be at the same, same space, uh, same place in aviation. And, and there are some that have a little more, um, outgoing personality or, or not. I, I found sometimes I just had to, um, sometimes I didn't join in. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I didn't follow everybody to the O club to have a drink on Fridays. Um, I just felt awkward there and it spiraled into something that I wasn't always comfortable with. So I, I had other things that I did, but I always stayed plugged in with, uh, study groups, you know, guys that would get together for barbecue. And like you said, Caitlin, you're absolutely right. We're going to learn from them. They're going to learn from us. It, it is kind of funny how women have a different group of details that they snag onto. And I can't tell you how many times there'd be something, you know, in a, in a check ride or something that guys would be stumbling on. And I, as a woman, I would see, oh, that's pretty simple. I'll give you an example. Out of control flight. Everybody threw up on that flight. It was talked about, it was dreaded. And um, I tend to have an iron stomach and I don't throw up. So it didn't bother me. But whenever I started teaching it, I realized these guys, number one, they're talking about it and making themselves sick before they even get to the brief. They were swallowing hard and turning green, but also they weren't eating. And 100% oxygen that we breathe during that flight would make anybody sick on an empty stomach. So I, I told them, you know, eat a peanut butter sandwich before you come. I promise that will make you feel better. And I explained to them that that hundred percent oxygen on empty stomach, if we went and flew straight and level, you would throw up. And, and also I would give them kind of a carrot at the end of the flight so that they weren't just thinking about, okay, I've got to hold on to my cookies while I get through all of this tumbling in the air. And I would say, you know, we're going to finish with plenty of gas and time to either do aerobatics if you want to, or go sightseeing, or if there's something coming up and your uh, pre-solo check ride that you'd like to practice, no harm, no foul, we'll practice it. We'll get it down. And that was such a girl perspective, I was told. I don't know, but uh, it certainly helps. So you have something to contribute. And uh, Dakota, um, I wanted to tell you, uh, if your Republic uh, sister would like to get together for a book club, uh, let me know and uh, we'll Zoom a book club. Oh my gosh. Wow, that's I love a cool that. offer. <laughs> I will, Nicole, did yeah, you say yes? I will definitely let them know. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely let them know. <laughs> and we can yeah. do it in we can do it in the evening or something. So no matter what hotel you're in, everybody might be on the ground. Awesome. <laughs> Devin is our youngest you. of the crew. Any closing uh, thoughts? Um, I don't think I have any like specific questions. I know we're pretty sh like short on time, kind of. I just thank you so much for all the discussion that we've had today and for inviting me. I really enjoyed talking with all of you and learning a little bit about what you guys like your guys' story as well as just hearing advice from everyone and listening to like your opinions and your thoughts. It was really it was really enjoyable. 
Yeah, I'd like to, to thank all, all of you for being on the program, uh, particularly your young ladies with your aspirations in the industry. Uh, I think one of the points that came out several times that's really key is that it's wide open. Um, this industry is growing leaps and bounds uh, in, in all aspects, whether it's to be a pilot or to go into maintenance or any other aspect of the industry. And, and so there's just a lot of opportunity uh, out there. And, and it's, it's a matter, it's really just up to you as to what you'd like to do and accomplish. So, but you guys are definitely on the, the fast track to, uh, to do some great things. And so it was, it was a pleasure to have you on. And of course, Tammy Jo, uh, getting your insight from your experiences and, and everything uh, that you've done, uh, it's a real pleasure to have had you too. Oh, it was certainly my pleasure to join you, Vince. And Caitlin, Devin, Dakota, what a treat. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It was really great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. So um, again, uh, this is All Things Aviation and Aerospace. I'm Vince Mickens. And it, we, every week we, we talk with uh, different folks about what they've done in the industry and, and uh, the up and coming of what they want to accomplish. So I hope you guys continue to watch and listen and uh, enjoyed having everybody on board. Ladies, take care of yourself and we'll catch you another time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Dakota, um, get, get my email from Vince. Okay. I will do that. Hey, that Thank book you. club thing. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And it's that's open to, be, it's open to you nice. ladies. I'm, I'm almost jealous. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You'd be welcome. Dakota, be sure and invite Vince. Uh, Caitlin and, and Devin, same offer to you. Uh, if you guys have a book club uh, and you happen to choose my book, uh, I'd be happy to join you for 30, 45 minute book club. Just let me know. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right.